Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to Rogue System. And this is the shutdown tutorial which will ape the content you'll find in tutorial mission 5 in the game itself. Now the whole purpose of the shutdown tutorial, or the shutdown procedure for that matter, is to put the ship into a state where you can hand it over to maintenance on board the station, which uh, as per the previous tutorial and as you can see out the side here, we're currently docked with. Now eventually in Rogue System, uh, damage, malfunctions and component age will be persistent. So that means that looking after your ship, maintaining all of the systems within their limits and properly shutting your ship down at the end of a mission will become important over time. So let's get started. First thing that we want to do is to make the manoeuvring thruster system safe. Presently we're in hot plasma mode, although we do have the cold gas override enabled as we would uh, during the docking procedure. Uh, but the first thing is to turn off the ICH cyclotron. This is what superheats the plasma, so with that turned off we're basically in cold plasma mode. Next thing to do would be to turn off the helicon ionizer. This is what actually turns the argon into plasma in the first instance. If we turn this off, we're now no longer producing plasma. Here the system shutting down and the plasma temperature is dropping. Once that's right down near the bottom of the scale, it'll be safe for us to turn off the superconductor, which is what creates the electromagnetic shield protecting us from the plasma. So let's raise the cover, turn off the superconductor, and straight away we get a warning sound. Let's uh, just cancel that for now. Normally, obviously, turning off the electromagnetic shield would be a very bad thing and it would trigger an immediate shutdown of the MTS. Uh, but that's okay, that's now dropping normally. Next thing for us to do is to turn off the injector. We're now just in normal cold gas mode without the injector. And now we hit fuel cutoff, and that basically makes the MTS completely inert. Last thing for us to do is to unpower the MTS itself. And at that stage you'll notice that uh, any of the buttons that we had set have popped back out into their default positions. That would be the nozzles uh, and the cold gas override. So at that stage the MTS is now fully shut down. Next thing for us to do is uh, disable the NAS, the navigation and autopilot system. We're not going to be needing that anymore. And uh, now, as we're going to be shutting down the reactor any moment now, we need to disable the maintenance cutoff so that, the, that we are uh, drawing energy from the station again. Um, so, with that done, we can uh, start shutting down the reactor. Now, we can't just turn the reactor off because the core is quite hot and the you know we don't want it to, to cool too quickly. You would probably damage it. So, we want to first disable fuse enable. That will cause the system to start to cool and also it will start generating less and less energy. So we'll give that some time and in the meantime we'll shut down our two fuel cells which are also heated. Uh, we'll just allow them to cool naturally. We'll turn fuel cell 1 off and turn fuel cell 2 off. That will start the process of uh, those cooling back down. So at this stage it should be okay for us to hit the fuel shut off on the LENR and uh, that will cause it to cool even further and produce even less energy and uh, with the the two consumers of uh, of uh, hydrogen disabled we're now good to start shutting down the tanks in the uh, reactant core module so all we have to do is for each tank in turn turn off the shut off valve turn off the tank pump we'll do the same for tank two tank three and tank four and with all of the uh, reactant uh, core tanks turned off. We can then turn off the reactant core module entirely and silence the alarm that gets triggered. The, the reactant core obviously normally is something that you need active all the time, so it triggers a little alarm when it's not running. Okay, so at this stage we should find that the, uh, the core has cooled out with its normal operating range, so it's now safe for us to disable the preheat on the core and we'll find that uh, the core temperature is now dropping even quicker. Okay, so at this stage we're producing just about no energy from the LNR anyway, so we'll switch to the main bus and we'll turn it off. Next, we're going to disable the viewport monitor system by using the hard mounted display. So we bring up the displays page, click on VMS, and click system power. And we're plunged into darkness, we've no longer got our view of the outside world. Okay, so next thing for us to do is to turn off battery number two. Going to switch to battery number two, we're going to disable recharge, then we're going to turn the battery off. Now if we go to the LENR we should find that core temperatures dropped right down to the end of the scale, so it's now safe 
uh, for us to disable Alienor power. And we'll find that the electromagnetic shielding for the Alienor is uh, now powering down. Once we're happy that that's uh, dropping, we can actually turn off the MES system entirely. Well, I guess it's not MES system, it's main engine system. <laughs> so, with the reactor turned off, we no longer need any contact with space traffic control, so we can turn off the comms transmitter and turn off the comms uh, panel entirely. Okay, with that done, we now turn to the temperature management system. We're going to drain all of the fluid out of both loops. We can do this by pressing the loop depressurize button. You should then find that uh, coolant level and coolant pressure drop. Once they've dropped all the way down to zero, the pump power will automatically turn off. So we're just going to wait and make sure that that happens for TMS loop one. Okay, with that done, we switched to system two and hit loop depressurize on that as well. Now this fluid is all getting drained into the main reservoir. The maintenance will uh, replace the fluid in there uh, during normal maintenance. Okay, and that's loop two depressurized as well. So at this stage, we can turn the TMS system off. And uh, if we switch to the secondary bus, that can now be turned off as well. Okay, we'll now switch to battery one, turn its recharge off and turn it off. It's safe for us to do this because we have the maintenance cut off disabled. So we're actually still drawing power from the station even with, maintenance, uh, even with uh, both batteries turned off. So next thing for us to do is to switch to the primary bus and disable that. And that causes all of our remaining displays to go out. And at this stage, we can now turn the maintenance cut off back on we're now not drawing power from the station anymore. And we'll turn off the instrument backlighting, turn back on the cabin floodlights so we can uh, see what we're doing when we step out of the seat and unsafe our pilot seat. Okay, now if we press the R key, we'll step up and out of the seat. And let's go ahead and open the hatch out of the cockpit. And if we make our way back out into the corridor here, cabin lighting will automatically come on, although it's in its low power emergency mode. And if we make our way up this ladder, we'd be able to exit the ship and into the station. And that concludes the shutdown procedure. I hope you all enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.